as Kieran said, one of the coolest dinosaurs and most unique dinosaurs that was recently discovered is the Spinosaurus. Our dinosaur of the day is going to be Spinosaurus, specifically Spinosaurus aegypticus. The aegypticus references the fact that it was originally discovered in Egypt, and the name means spiny lizard. Spinosaurus was bigger than a T-Rex, as you saw in Jurassic Park 3, but unlike in the movie, it was ill-suited for fighting on land, so it wouldn't have won against a T-Rex most likely the way it did in the movie. Spinosaurus lived from the late Cretaceous about 110 to 95 million years ago in what is now North Africa. The original was discovered in 1912 and described by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1915, but unfortunately the original remains were destroyed in World War II. Spinosaurus could reach lengths of over 49 feet. Yeah, as mentioned in the bumper book slash grand tour of dinosaurs, depending on which country you're in, it had a head that more resembled, a, I think it's pronounced gharial, than a crocodile. And I encourage you to look up this animal. It's G-H-A-R-I-A-L. It's really interesting looking. It's got a really long, thin snout. And when you look at it, you see a lot of similarities between it and Spinosaurus. It's a good example of what they call convergent evolution. So convergent evolution is the theory that even if you have different animals totally isolated, they'll tend to evolve in similar ways if they're in a similar environment. So both of them are semi-aquatic animals that feed on fish, so they end up getting a head that's similar in shape. So Spinosaurus' long head would have been good for catching and eating fish. Uh, there were fish-like bone fossils found where it appears to have been eaten by the Spinosaurus. And there's evidence that suggests it lived on both land and water, like a modern crocodile. The name Spinosaurus comes from the long spine extensions coming out of its back attached to the vertebrae. The spines grew to over one and a half meters, or more than six feet long, and judging by the close proximity and the fact that they were connected to the spine, they probably had skin connecting them, forming a sail-like structure. It's how it's always been depicted when I've seen it. That's certainly how they depicted it in Jurassic Park 3. But some scientists have suggested that the spines may have been covered in fat and formed a giant hump on its back instead of a sail. At first, when I heard this, I thought that it made a lot of sense because a sail attached to vertebrae seems kind of precarious. I was imagining, like, what if it bumped it or something? Like, we all know if you hit your back really hard on something, you can have some serious trouble. But it turns out that there weren't really enough blood vessels in the area to support the hump theory. And the idea that it needed to dissipate a bunch of heat was one of the predominant reasons why they thought it might have had a hump. And that was before we discovered that they probably lived in swamps. Since the vertebrae had ball and socket joints, it was also more flexible than a lot of backs that I'm familiar with. <laughs> and it may have been able to arch its back to a point or spread out its spine to attract a mate. So, like, we don't know what the plates on a stegosaurus did exactly or the osteoderms on an ankylosaurus. The function of the sails isn't entirely clear, uh, but it may have been used for thermoregulation uh, or display or, as Kieran mentioned in his interview, creating a shadow on the water to find prey. Spinosaurus may have also been the first dinosaur to take to the water, and it lived partially in the water. The large carnivore probably ate fish, ancient crocodiles, and anything else in the water. One was found with a land animal in its gut, but it may have scavenged it or just grabbed it because of the opportunity. But fish can also be pretty big. There was actually one fish, a 25-foot-long sawfish, with a huge mouth and had jagged, spiky teeth called denticles. And they would have been very dangerous to try and eat, but if you were as big as Spinosaurus, they could also have been a big meal. Just like a crocodile, the snout had nostrils near the top of its head, so it could breathe while almost fully submerged. Another way that they could tell that it probably was semi-aquatic is that semi-aquatic animals tend to have higher bone density. This increases their overall density and it helps them control their buoyancy better. 
So as Garrett mentioned earlier uh, about why a Spinosaurus probably wouldn't win in a fight against a T-Rex, Spinosaurus didn't have as strong of leg muscles as other theropods, so it wouldn't have been able to run as fast. Its long neck and extra long head made it very front heavy, so it may not have even been able to walk upright on two legs on land, and its short back legs ended in flat feet, which also may have been webbed, so it would have slowed it down when it was out of water. Spinosaurus had six or seven thin needle-like teeth on each of the front of the upper jaw and 12 more teeth behind. They also had interlocking teeth at the end of the snout, and while they had powerful jaws, none of the teeth were serrated. Once the Spinosaurus found its prey, its large, backward slanted, and conical teeth made perfect rakes for catching fish. They had long, powerful front arms that, with hooked claws that caught anything that their teeth missed. While swimming, the large spine would have been visible to anything out of the water, possibly serving to scare off smaller animals or attract mates like we mentioned before. Aside from the Egyptian Spinosaurus, Spinosaurus moroccanus, meaning Moroccan spine lizard, is another specimen, but it might also be the same species. There's a great TED talk that Jack Horner, the famous paleontologist, did where he talks about several different dinosaur species and how they are actually the same species. So he gives an example with the Pachycephalosaurus and some Ceratopsians, but you could easily see with the Spinosaurus aegypticus and the Spinosaurus moroccanus that they're so similar that it's pretty, I'm pretty skeptical about whether or not they're actually separate species. As Jack Horner mentions in his TED talk, Scientists like to name things whether or not they deserve a new name. So Spinosauridae is a family of theropod dinosaurs, which is a group of mostly carnivorous dinosaurs that have evolved into modern birds. Spinosaurids have been found in Africa, Europe, South America, Asia, and even Australia. According to a study published in the journal Biology Letters, in 2011, a neck vertebrae from a dinosaur and a snout resembling a crocodile's was found in Australia, which showed that the Spinosaurus family had a much wider range than scientists previously thought. Spinosaurids were all very large, with crocodile-like skulls and teeth with small or no serrations. Spinosaurids also had thin narrow jaws mainly used to eat fish, and unlike other theropods, they were not built to attack large prey that could fight back. But a study in 2013 did find that Spinosaurus didn't necessarily only eat fish, and instead their diet depended on their size. In addition to fish, Spinosaurids ate small animals. Baryonyx, a type of Spinosaurid, was found with digested bones of a small iguanodon in its stomach, and one spinosaur was found with a pterosaur in its stomach contents. 